Hey, folks. Welcome back to Sorry What. I'm Jason, and today's story is a long one so grab your favorite drink, find a chill spot, and let's dive right in. A few months ago my wife, Connie, came up with an idea. Sonny, some of the ladies in our political support group think we should become volunteers for Senator Stickler's re-election campaign. We you? You and I. Oh really? What's involved? Is anyone else signing up for this? I don't think anybody else is all that interested. From what I understand, up until the election, it would be as much time as we are willing to donate. We'd be traveling around the state helping with fundraising events. I'd imagine we'd be doing whatever was needed at the time. What about my job? You have what, 20 some weeks of vacation you haven't used? Take a few months off. I think this would be a blast. I had to hand it to her. This was totally out of character for us. We've been married for 22 years, and both kids were now in college. Having an empty nest was very different. Nothing we had ever done was this spontaneous. It did have a certain appeal about it. Get some more detailed information. If we're on the road, who pays for what, things like that. Do we feed ourselves? Are we required to wear uniforms? Find out what you can. The information we received wasn't a showstopper. It was a little more out of pocket than I'd hoped, but we could afford it. Senator Stickler's name had been tossed around as a possible presidential contender in 8 or 12 years. Who knows, maybe we'd get the chance to work on a presidential campaign too. Plus 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 plus. I started my job two years before Connie and I were married. One of the other hires, who started the same day, was Vanessa Bromley. She was in Bromley at the time. That's her married name. She's been divorced for about 10 years now. We were equals along the way until she took maternity leave. After that, I seemed to get the promotions and spotlight jobs. She's been reporting to me for four years now. You could not ask for a more dedicated employee. Although nothing inappropriate has ever taken place, when we are alone Vanessa refers to me as her next ex. She's made it very clear that I would have no choice in the matter if I ever came back on the market. Our employer does not have a non-fraternization policy. They don't want any legal exposure on something they really can't control. That's not to say that some haven't been sent packing after letting their personal relationships cloud their loyalty to the company. Connie doesn't fully trust Vanessa. What's that old saying? Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. That's Connie. We've had Vanessa over for many of our block parties. I think Connie is just gauging whether Vanessa and I act strangely. Since nothing had ever occurred, it's easy to act naturally. There's no travel in my job. Connie worked as a temp until she became pregnant. Ever since she's been a stay-at-home mom. When the kids were in school, she volunteered at the school. Only recently did she try the temp job thing again, but she's woefully unqualified for today's workplace. So now she and her posse volunteer for whatever needs saving. Not once have I ever suspected Connie of a physical or an emotional affair. Plus 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 plus. We filled out the necessary paperwork and passed the background checks. He was not thrilled, but my boss agreed I could take the time off. Vanessa was named my temporary replacement. Hey next ex. I get to be you for 10 weeks. Try not to fire my best employees. I've got a little more backbone than that last guy. You probably won't fit in when you get back. Listen to you. If you end up overwhelmed, just call. It's okay if I'm the only one that sees you crying. Ha. 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 I may call you, you know, if things get weird. I expect some of the guys to test my resolve. They're treading on thin ice if they do. I'm here for you Vanessa. Gotta go. Talk with you soon. Thanks next sex. Later. With little fanfare, Connie and I spent our first day as campaign volunteers. We were one of three older couples amongst a slew of college-aged men and women. On Wednesday, before that night's fundraising event, we were introduced to the senator. I'd seen him on television for the last 12 or so years, so meeting him in person didn't do much for me. Connie, however, was acting like a teeny bopper at a boy band concert. Henrik Stickler was full of himself. I suspect he fancied himself a ladies' man. The way he treated the male volunteers was quite dismissive. The ladies were kissed on the forehead, hugged, and touched on the arms, back, neck, and cheeks. He was somewhat shorter than most at maybe 5'8", and easily above 200 pounds. He was not physically fit and was easily winded. Connie, watch yourself around Henrik. I don't like how he's all touchy-feely with the woman. These are sunny, he's simply a very outgoing person. Get a grip. We filled our days making phone calls, posters, copies, coffee, and being gophers. You certainly don't need to be in the upper 90% of the graduating class to do this stuff. We use all sorts of adhesives making these displays. When we had a trophy or other heavy item to secure to the poster board, we'd use super glue. You have to be extra careful with that stuff as you can easily glue your fingers together. 
I did it once and it took three days before I could pry them apart. Even using the internet solutions to loosen the grip of the glue, I still lost several layers of skin when I finally got them separated. Those two fingers are still trying to heal and can be quite painful at times. Apparently the glue prevents the skin from breathing, and you lose several layers of skin. Every few days I was back at the office supplies store for another case of super glue, duct tape, paper glue, poster boards, and staples. Between the different types of glue, and all of the other crap, the campaign was spending thousands. When you considered the lifespan of some of these things, which was a couple of hours during the fundraising dinners, the waste was staggering. Connie seems to be addicted to these smoothie drinks, so I head out two or three times a day to get her fix. What sounded like a fun way to spend a few months was turning into a mindless waste of time. I'm no more inclined to vote for Stickler than his opponent. Henrik was making the same speech every chance he got. I've got a plan. I'm going to stick to it and I'm going to stick it to Washington. Trouble is he's been there for two terms, and all he's done is pad his pockets. I doubt he's ever introduced a meaningful piece of legislation. Voting along party lines is all he ever does. If his opponent didn't appear to be just as sleazy, I'd quit this experiment. Plus 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 plus. Our whole life was taking a beating. The long hours and time spent driving meant sex was happening, well, not at all. Connie kept updating her Facebook page with pictures from each fundraising event. Again and again here I am with Senator Stickler. Every picture showed his hand somewhere on her. At a minimum, she was starstruck. Several attempts at breaking my celibate streak were shot down when I complained about Connie's behavior around Henrik. Connie, what's gotten into you? You hang on every word Henrik speaks and are like a puppy dog following him around. Do I have to worry about the two of you? I can't believe you. What? Are you jealous of a successful man? Is it it? I like him. He's got money, power, and prestige. He's also got a wife. And then she stomped away and slammed the bedroom door. I quit this campaign if Connie did too. That suggestion resulted in another shouting match. This election can't come soon enough. Stickler was leading in the polls, but not by more than the sampling margin of error, so it was still in doubt. With two weeks to go it was all hands on deck. Plus 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 plus. We were three hours from home and getting ready for tonight's fundraising dinner. Henrik had just entered the ballroom and was busy schmoozing. My hands were full of brochures to be handed out this evening. I had just returned from picking them up and had not seen Connie yet. Your sunny tennises, right? I turned to find a man with a manila folder that I am. How can I help you? My name is unimportant, call me James. I'm an investigator for some people who have an interest in seeing Senator Stickler lose the election. I have some things to show you that might convince you to join our cause. I glanced around not sure what to make of this guy. It didn't look like anyone was watching us. James continued to walk with me. We walked towards the hotel lobby while my world unraveled. Sonny, your wife and Henrik are having an affair. Nine times over the last four weeks she has joined him in his suite immediately prior to a fundraising dinner. The pictures in this folder show her coming and going on those occasions. There are pictures on my phone of this afternoon's encounter. He leaves first, while she showers. She left his suite about ten minutes ago. James pulled up the pictures from today. My stomach was churning and I was close to hyperventilating. You should sit if you're going to look at the pictures in the folder. Twice we were able to get pictures of their sexual encounter. I couldn't do it. My marriage is over, but I didn't think I wanted those images haunting me forever. How do I know these aren't staged? I guess you don't know. He's kind of a perv and bites his woman on their bum. Have a look see tonight if you doubt me. See if this sounds familiar. Henrik slips her room keycard, which she puts into her sweater pocket. She then finds you, and gives you a task which sends you out of the building. When you return she's freshly ducked and you're clueless. If you look close enough you probably notice that whatever you were sent to pick up was available at noon, but you weren't sent to get them until after 4pm. About 90 minutes before each fundraising dinner, I'm sent out to pick up copies or to buy something. Today was no different. Ducking slot. The receipt for the brochures I picked up today showed they were ready this morning. Will you have my attention? Why are you recruiting me? Of the many women Henrik is currently ducking, we believe you are not the type to take this lying down. We're not sure of the others. Well you've read me correctly. I will not go quietly. James went on to describe how much they would like to see a very vocal and demonstrative marital meltdown. He was willing to give me $10,000 for my emotional distress. He flashed an envelope which I assumed was the cash. Duck it. I opened the folder with the pictures and there it was. The act of biting her naked bum, cum dripping from his clock. His ducking small clock. She pissed away a 22 year marriage for this hole. 
I grabbed the money envelope not tonight, but very soon, the sheet will hit the fan. Count on it. There's also a business card in there for one of our attorneys who is willing to represent you pro bono. James smiled and patted me on the back as he left. I went out to my car and put the envelopes in the trunk. The quick count confirmed it was 10 grand. I put the attorney's card in my wallet. No longer was I interested in helping the campaign, so I didn't return to the ballroom until the event was breaking up. Why did this happen? I was sick. How could I have meant so little to her? Happily ever after wasn't meant to be. As I sat there fuming, I pulled the attorney's card out and called his office. Grant took my call and it was a very productive chat. He was tasked with preparing the petition for divorce. Grant did catch me off guard. Sonny, if your revenge results in the police getting involved, don't say a thing. Get me involved immediately. Thanks for the advice, Grant. I haven't decided what to do, but I'm not prone to violence. Well, he's a powerful man, and once you piss him off, who knows how low the slime bowl will sink. I spent the next two hours trying to come up with a suitable revenge. A million ideas were flooding my brain, but I had absolutely no idea how to pull off any of them. I wasn't going to have Connie served until after I took my pound of flesh from the pair. Plus 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 plus, where in the hell have you been? Don't you answer your phone anymore. I was worried sick that something happened to you. I wasn't feeling well. Guess I misplaced my phone. Ready to go. We still have to help clean up. I'm leaving. You coming with me or are you getting your own ride? Just go. I'll catch up with you later. On the road, the workers are put up in cheap motels. Crushed, I drove the three miles to my room. It gave me time to entertain my rage. Having warned the witch, she's earned everything that was coming her way. I wanted revenge. Not just on Connie but her scumbag lover. Hopefully I could tank his chances for the election. The more pain I can inflict, the better. Connie got back to the motel over two hours later. She'd been drinking. I no longer cared. Plus 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 plus. I showered and dressed first in the morning. We were headed home for two days before the next fundraising dinner. Connie was sleeping in her nightgown and panties. I pulled the covers back and yanked her panties down. She woke up quickly, what the duck are you doing? After the way you acted yesterday you weren't getting any of that. I didn't want to duck her disease count. I wanted to see if there were any bite marks. My heart sank at the sight of several bite marks. We're done. I'm leaving for home in 15 minutes, with or without you. Connie skipped the shower and was switching non-stop the entire 3 hour trip home. I really pissed her off. It's so cute how you think I'm listening. I'd never heard such a profanity lace tirade. Somehow I'm the problem here. If I thought I could get away with it, I'd open her door and kick her out at 70 miles per hour. Once home I found our dog, Sausage, was lethargic, so I took him in to see the vet. Anything to get away from her at this point. As we were waiting in the examination room, I noticed a bottle of chloroform sitting on the counter. A sinister revenge plan seemed to appear out of thin air. I pocketed the bottle. After Sausage was given an antibiotic shot, I headed back home. Kiss that see no goodbye. Although it was damn hard, I tried to act as normal as possible. It was 48 hours of cold shoulders and dining alone. I snuck off and got tested for STDs. I couldn't remember the last time we had sex. There was no need to wait for my stick to fall off if we did have sex, since her slot jeans kicked in. The 4 hour drive to my final fundraiser was quite chilly as hardly a word was spoken, except of course for the demands to stop, so she could piss. It was tempting to just pull off the road and invite her to do a perk test. The silence was much better than listening to her whine about how I just didn't understand what a statesman stickler was. Every time I thought about my plan I broke into a smile. Please try to act positive. Your attitude has been horrible recently. Got it. I think Henrik is ducking up this campaign good enough without my help. It's only a matter of time until one of his groupies pulls his clock out and sucks it in front of everybody. God, you're pathetic. He's a gentleman and a leader. You're just jealous. Plus 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 plus. Around 3pm I gave Connie the smoothie she asked for a while ago. This one was spiked, more than a little, with a laxative. I'm looking for some bowel action in a few hours. Now the wait begins. I watched Henrik, and around 4pm he gave Connie a hotel room keycard. Exactly as the investigator indicated, she headed back to where our coats were draped. Like a creature of habit, she put the keycard in the pocket of her sweater. Connie made her way over to me, and guess what, I'm supposed to go get some brochures at a store about a mile away. I waited until she was distracted, then claimed the keycard from her sweater. The room number, 321, was written in ink on the plastic card. Taking my duffel bag of goodies, I headed to the men's room and changed. My appearance was radically different. 
The traffic in and out was brisk, so I had no trouble blending in with my new identity. My duffel bag of goodies was under my baggy shirt. The third floor stairwell door had a window in it, so I lingered there acting as if I was on a phone call. Ten minutes passed before the snake entered the room. A minute later the slot emerged from the elevator and started frantically searching her sweater for the key. She knocked a few times before Henrik answered. He jerked her arm hard pulling her into the room. I gave them a minute to get their party started, then strolled towards their door. I paused long enough to hear the rutting. Wearing nitrite gloves, I slipped the keycard in. The door light turned green, and I quietly entered the room. It was a suite and I could see the action happening in the bedroom. Connie's sagging blobs were swaying with each thrust, as Henrik ducked her doggy style. He had only taken his shoes and pants off. It looked odd to see a guy in black socks between a woman's legs. Connie was in her birthday suit. It was a sight I wasn't prepared to watch. That wasn't my wife that was some crack hoe. She was just a cum bucket for him. Why would she throw away a 22 year marriage for this? Don't know, don't care. She did and it's a done deal. With a rag soaked in chloroform, I wrapped my left arm around Henrik's neck and used my right hand to cover his mouth and nose with the rag. The struggle was minimal, although he did get a hard elbow shot into my ribs. Connie, with her head buried in the pillow, really didn't pick up on the commotion. No, no, don't slow down. More, more, more. Henrik collapsed to the floor. I did the same left arm right hand maneuver with Connie. She slumped onto the bed. Moving unconscious people around is not as easy as I was hoping. I definitely need to start working out. First things first, I completely stripped Henrik and pulled him up onto the bed. I shoved Connie to the edge of the bed. She fell off, oops. Grabbing an unused washcloth from the bathroom, I dried both Henrik's clock and Connie's kitty lips. I also wiped Connie's face clean of her makeup. Opening one of the large bottles of super glue, I proceeded to glue Connie's kitty lips together, not completely, so she'll be pissing like a shower head. Coating Henrik's clock completely, with extra on his clock head, I stretch pulled it underneath his balls and glued it near his back hole. It's amazing how far you can stretch a clock. I made sure to pinch his clock's opening close. Losing several layers of skin here is going to sting. My plan was to push his bum cheeks together to pin his clock in place. That wasn't going to work so I simply pressed firmly until his clock was stuck in place. That was a lot easier than I thought it would be. My ribs hurt so I stuck the tip of the glue bottle in the busted to hole and gave it a squirt. He can't piss her sheet now. Thinking about the laxative, I glued Henrik's upper lip to his nostrils. He'd have to breathe through his mouth and he won't be able to shut it. After centering Henrik on his back, in the middle of the bed, I maneuvered Connie up onto the bed and spun her around into the 6 and 9 position. With a few adjustments, I positioned Connie's a hole to point at Henrik's mouth. There were a few inches separating them. I applied glue to both sides of Henrik's face and Connie's inner thighs. After a minute of pressure, they were stuck together. Lifting Connie's head up, I applied a nice coat of glue to her nips and pressed her back down into Henrik's chest. Losing several layers of skin on those nips will hurt like hell for who knows how long. She was stuck to his belly now. Applying glue to Connie's cheeks and Henrik's inner thighs, I secured his legs to her face. I glued a vote stickler bumper sticker in Connie's hair. That looks so good, I put one in Henrik's hair too. I stared at her bite mark covered bum. Which? Why? What the duck did I do to deserve this? Standing back I admired my work. I had the better part of half a bottle of glue left, so I coated their palms and fingers with glue. Thinking back to the times I'd actually performed mutual oral pleasuring, I glued their hands behind their partner's knees. As I was loading up all of their clothes into one of those hotel laundry plastic bags, I found Connie's cell phone. I slid it under Henrik, along with the contents of his pants. I hustled as I heard some soft groans coming from the bed. Opening the deadbolt to prevent the room door from closing, I left the room taking all of their clothing and found my way to the loading dock. Across the dock were the dumpsters for the pizza place and I could see the garbage truck heading towards them. I tossed the sack of clothes and my supplies into the dumpster that was about to be emptied. Watching the garbage truck take the damning evidence away was an unexpected bonus. As I was returning to the men's room, I passed by a wolf pack of reporters and cameramen. Naked politician, room 321, door is open. A mad scramble ensued with most opting to sprint up the stairs. I found my way to the men's room and removed the clandestine outfit I'd worn. Stepping out I headed out of the hotel and left the clothes near the homeless guys. They were snatched up quickly. My story would be that I found them discarded in the bathroom and was thinking of the less fortunate. Plus 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 plus. I sent Connie a text messages asking where she was. A few minutes later I called her number intending to leave a voicemail. A man answered hello. Is Connie there? Connie who? Connie Tennises. Hold on. 
I could hear him shouting anybody know Akani Tennises. Someone started screaming Uo. Who's asking? I'm Sunny Tennises, her husband. Where are you calling from Sunny? Connie and I are campaign workers. I'm by the ballroom. Get your bum up to room 321, pronto. The phone went dead. I walked briskly up the stairs to the third floor. There was a small commotion near room 321. When I entered there were at least a dozen people taking pictures and videos. A few were on the phone passing the story along. Stickler's press secretary and campaign manager were on the balcony banging on the sliding glass door. Someone had locked them out. I suspect they wanted to break up this party and were voted off the island. I made my way over to the lump of flesh on the bed. Hey slot, is it you in there? What are all these bite marks on your butt? Sonny, I'm sorry. We can work this out. Henrik bites me after sex. Looks like you've been his duck toy for quite some time. And you think we can work this out? I don't. Tell you what. I'm going to step outside for a minute, and if you want to save our marriage, you'll join me there. Sonny. I can't move. And you should know we are history. After the way you cuckled at me with teeny tiny prick here, there's not a chance in hell. Henrik spoke up duck off cluck. I got her off every time. The temptation to permanently remove him from society was strong. Connie helped me earn the 10 grand. No way. I faked it every time. Even with you all the way and I could hardly feel your pathetic twig of a clock. You should get on the transplant list for an adult sized clock. Ouch. Quit pulling. The reporters were loving it. I started answering questions about myself and Connie. Connie groaned, I need to use the bathroom. Now. Nobody said or did anything and then came the sound pfffftttt splat. Henrik was gagging and he started vomiting and choking. Piss was spraying in several directions. After she was finished, a few of the reporters turned the flesh ball over. You could hear Henrik struggling to clear his airway. What the duck are you doing which? I couldn't hold it a hole. Quit pulling. It hurts. There was a smattering of giggles throughout the room. Almost all of the cameramen got good close-up shots. Henrik's odd-colored hair plugs were now covered with sheet. The smell was pretty gross. A couple of police officers entered the room, and we were all ushered out into the hall in under a minute. I continued to answer questions until the hotel security sent us down to the first floor. Plus 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 plus. The crowd was getting anxious. At a thousand dollars a plate, Henrik needed to be pressing flesh. The limo with his wife pulled up to the curb. It seemed like there were extra television bands covering tonight's event. Of the 200 expected guests, only a smattering were unaccounted for. Things were getting exciting. The ambulance arrived, and a slew of reporters, with cameras flashing, were harassing the police and hotel workers. When a gurney neared, with the sheet covering its cargo, the reporters recorded the sounds. A man's voice stammered. The witch is shitting again cough, gag, cough. Followed by a woman's voice stuck you. I can't help it. Ouch, quit pulling. Mrs. Stickler was fending off abusive comments when someone handed her a folder of pictures. She looked at a few, gasped, and dropped them. It was as if someone had spilled an open bag of birdseed in an aviary. The photos were scooped up by the reporters, and the rumor mill was on fire. The loudspeaker squeaked to life ladies and gentlemen, due to his hospitalization, Henrik Stickler will not be able to join us this evening. We thank you for your understanding and continued support. Dinner will now be served. These people love to strip their stuff, so Henrik not being there made no difference to them. I was done being a worker so I drove to my motel. While I was resting on my bed, trying to figure out why I'd been discarded so easily, I started to cry. The loss of my marriage finally hit me. The strong marriage I thought I had was an illusion. About 30 minutes after I laid down, my cell phone rang. Color ID identified it as the hospital. Game face on. Hello. Is Mr. Sunny Tennis is available? Speaking. Mr. Tennises, your wife has been admitted to University Hospital. Do you know where we are located? I do. Why does that matter? Don't you want to see her? That cheating slut. Can I ask that she be taken off of life support? Sir, she's not on life support. We need you to confirm her identity and supply her insurance information. My $10,000 incentive kicked in whatever, I'll be there in a bit. Plus 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 plus. There were several news crews hanging around the entrance of the hospital. Management wasn't allowing them inside. Someone recognized me. Mr. Tennises. Mr. Tennises. Talk to me. I held up a stop sign in a bit. At the reception desk, I identified myself. I'm here to see Connie Tennises. I'm her husband. I'm sorry, sir. We are not allowing visitors at this time. I need to make copies of her insurance cards. 
Lady, for all I know you have a crack hole pretending to be my wife. Take your pen and stick it up your... Her jaw dropped. I headed back outside. Mr. Tennis's. What's going on? The hospital claims to have my wife, but they won't let me see her. One of the crews fired up their broadcast spotlights, and I heard someone announce, we're going live. Can you repeat what you just said Mr. Tennis's? I said the hospital claims to have my wife, but they won't let me see her. When I identified myself they said they weren't allowing visitors at this time. I guess being a senator allows you to bar access to the cheating hoe of a wife I just found out about. I pulled out a picture of Twig Stick, have you seen this picture of Senator Stickler? The perv with a miniature clock bites the bum of his conquests after ducking them. If your wife or girlfriend has worked on his campaign, check her butt. About that time hospital security interrupted the roast and escorted me inside. A suit motioned me over. Mr. Tennis's, our receptionist stirred when she denied you seeing your wife. I do have to warn you that this could be very traumatic for you. Traumatic how? Well, she and the senator are glued quite firmly together. Both are in their birthday suits. Yeah, I know. I saw them earlier. Have you gotten them apart yet? No, I think I heard that it could be several days unless they agree to surgery. There would be permanent scarring if we surgically separate them. It would be much wiser to induce their body oils to a higher level, and place them into a sweat chamber. My vote is to pride them apart in the most painful way you can devise. The suit nodded his head in agreement. If it was my wife, that's the route I would choose too. Plus 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 plus. An armed guard watched me closely as the administrator led me into her room. There were two nurses applying some kind of gel here there and everywhere. Henrik's hairy bum was pointed towards me and between his legs I saw Connie's eyes. Also in the room was the press secretary and campaign manager. Why are they in here? They don't look like family to me. Looks like a couple of pervs rubbing their clocks. The suit motioned them out, and when they refused, the armed guard convinced them. Nice to see you again slot. Counting the bite marks on your bum I guess you've been his cum bucket a bunch of times. Sonny. Please. I'll make it up to you. I loved you more than life itself Connie. I hope it was worth it. Some two minute duck sessions, from this tiny clock, for a 22 year marriage. The math doesn't work for me. I'm leaving and I will be filing for divorce. Sonny. Don't go. I need you. I turn towards the suit that's her. I'll give the front desk my insurance information. After dealing with the admissions lady, I headed out to chat with the reporters again. The senator had his goons in the room. I guess I'm not used to Washington style orgies. I hope his press secretary and campaign manager's wives are the understanding type. The suit had followed me out and quickly jumped in. They should have never been allowed to be in that room. Nothing inappropriate was going on. After a few more questions the interview was interrupted by a police officer. Sonny Tennises, you have the right to remain silent. Refusing to answer any questions pissed them off. I made my one call to Grant. He told me to answer everything with nothing, which I successfully accomplished. Ten minutes after he arrived, I was headed to my motel room. I gathered our stuff and checked out. I called Grant and told him to start the divorce. He told me his process server would wait until Connie had her own room. Plus 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 plus. My four hour drive was interrupted by a call from Vanessa. Hey next X. I just saw your 15 minutes of fame on the breaking news segment. You want to talk? Yeah, I do. If I dwell on my life I might zone out and drive off the road. How's the job? I'm awesome. We've been trying to figure out how to let you down gently. Chuckling you are so full of it. Speaking of which, did you see the little clip of her shitting all over him? Yeah, they're playing that clip over and over. It really is kind of funny. Without any private parts showing, they're willing to show the ball of flesh in the middle of the bed. The insinuation is there, but it's PG rated. Her quote about the clock transplant is hilarious. They played that a bunch of times too. How do I recover from this? You don't. You sweep me off of my feet and I live happily ever after. I'll do my best to drag your bum along for the ride. You can't imagine how tempting that sounds. I need it to sound more than tempting. When are you thinking you'll be back in town? Easily after midnight. Well there's a 2am flight to Vegas. I'd meet you at the airport. I pause for a moment, see you there. Yes. 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 You are so going to enjoy the next couple of days. We talked for an hour until she said she needed to get packed and to the airport. I could make my calls just as easily from Las Vegas. Whatever I needed to sign would have to wait a few days. While waiting for Vanessa, at the airport, I found a picture of the flesh ball on the internet, and copied it to Connie's Facebook page. Here I am with Senator Stickler. Plus 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 plus. 
I'd never seen Vanessa dress so provocatively. She never shows cleavage at work, and now you could drop a golf ball clear though the opening. Since you're staring, I assume you like. Yeah, it has possibilities. That's a nice flimsy little skirt you've worn too. I'm not used to that much cold air flirting with my cheeks. I'll do my best to keep them warm. You better. That doesn't look like a mini clock making that bulge in your pants. You should see the picture of the senator's clock. Here, look at this. I can't believe how small that a holes clock is. Q comes to mind. If you always had them face the wall they'd be none the wiser. Back to yours. Patience my dear. Did you find us a place to stay? You underestimate me. I've got a Uber ride lined up and VIP check-in at the hotel. Start counting, your new love life starts in under 3 hours. I was uncomfortable trying to get my stiff clock to cooperate. On the flight, Vanessa used her sweater as a blanket to cover us during the flight. She gently scratched my clock the entire time. I did the same to her kitty. Her nip nops betrayed her. This is so wrong, yet so right. The door of our hotel room closed as Vanessa launched herself into my arms. Our lips and tongues started getting to know each other, followed by a round of sweaty bed gymnastics. We dozed off for a few hours. I spooned her when I awoke. I went down on her and she did the same for me. We should try to do each other at the same time. I saw a video recently. We were both giggling that sounds fun. Let's go get some food, and then I want in that amazing kitty again. You got it stud. That's how the next 36 hours went. I lost track of how many times I came. By the time we boarded the return flight, there was no way that I could get my clock up again. Plus 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 plus. We parted ways at the airport but plans to get together for dinner. I hadn't turned my phone on the entire time I'd been gone. There were several calls and texts from two very concerned children. It was late, but I called both. They had a right to be pissed at me for being out of touch. Once we got past that little hurdle, I told them what I knew about their mother's adultery and current situation. Many of my and our friends had also left messages attempting to cheer me up and offer support. The strangest call was from a woman who identified herself as a campaign worker. I'm pretty good with names and thought this was one of the co-eds. I called her back in the morning. Hello? Hi, this is Sunny Tennises. You left me a message. Thanks for getting back to me. I have a problem and was wondering if you could point me in the right direction. Fire away. Don't know if I can help, but I'll try. My boyfriend and I have been working alongside you and Connie. I noticed that he has bite marks on his butt. I want to out the senator. Can you help me? Stickler rants and raves about religious righteousness. Those folks have little sympathy for alternate lifestyles. This would sink him permanently. I pulled out the card I had for the attorney. Call this guy and tell him you want to talk with James. Hint to James that you could certainly use a little financial help. Thank you Sonny. The news conference and immediate fallout was a blast to watch. Stickler's 2 percentage point lead in the polls was now a 5 point deficit with a week to the elections. His opponent's latest ads were brutal someone wants to stick it to Washington, but with his little twig of a stick, Washington might not feel it. Plus 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 plus. On Monday night, it was the hospital calling Sonny, I'm in my own room now. Can you drop by and talk to me? I don't want a divorce. What should I tell her? Should I invite the kids along? I don't have any plans to reconcile. I'm sorry Connie. I have a dinner date with my fiancé. Get well soon. I'll let the kids know about you. What did you say? We're still married. I said I'll let the kids know about you. Talk with you never I hope. Sonny don't you dare hang as I hit the end button. I called my intended fiancé. Vanessa answered, how's my next sex tonight? Wondering if you'd like to get together for a nightcap. Come on over. Now my plan was to talk with Vanessa first, but her plan went out. The sight of her bouncing blobs, as she rode me cowgirl style, made it tough to last long enough for her to finish. She didn't seem disappointed. What happened today? I resigned. Hopefully you'll get my job permanently. You did what? Why? There's no way I could ever treat you as an underling. I need a break. And besides, this allows us to find out if we really could be meant for each other. I was raw when Vanessa left for work in the morning, smiling, but raw. I'd signed up for a new phone and was keeping the kids surprised of what was going on. The remaining fundraising dinners had been cancelled. Senator Stickler had not been heard from since Friday night's fiasco. As great as the sex was, Vanessa and I agreed that the only way this would work is if we tried to take it much slower. We were delusional. Neither one of us could go more than a day without needing to see the other. Who cares if it doesn't last? This was a firestorm raging out of control. Both kids visited their mother in the hospital. 
The hospital resorted to cutting Henrik's and us and peen open to insert tubes. Connie told the kids that her nipnops could not stand to be touched by air water. I found some satisfaction in hearing that. If that's what Connie's experiencing then I suspect Henrik is in twice as much pain as I used a whole lot more glue on his privates. When Connie returned home from the hospital, she found that I'd already moved my stuff. I took it over to Vanessa's house. It didn't take Connie long to figure out that I was there. My kids told me Connie was going crazy not being able to get in touch with me. Plus 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 plus. After Connie was released, the kids convinced me that I needed to give her a chance to explain. The only reason I went over there was because of my kids. I rang the doorbell. Sonny, it's your house. You can come in. I don't want to come in. If you want to talk to me you'll have to join me on the porch. This was not going as Connie had planned. I could smell something nice coming from the kitchen. I was not about to be drawn into a reconciliation trap. Her hair was covered by a scarf, and her cheeks were covered with some type of medical cream. Her blobs were untethered and she was wearing some latex gloves. I hope those nip knobs hurt like hell. They can't hurt as much as my heart does. Sonny, please. I promise to behave. I'll give you 10 seconds to get out here or I'm leaving. Connie tried to hug and kiss me, but I repelled her. There was pain in her eyes. We sat a few feet apart on the porch steps. I don't want a divorce Sonny. It will take some time, but we can work this out. Counting our courtship we've been together 25 years. So what? You had no trouble throwing it away. And for what? Tell me. For what? The tears were trickling and she was choked up. I can't begin to express how sorry I am. I was swept up in the excitement of it. I know that's just an excuse and what I did is completely inexcusable. But I'm begging you to give me another chance. Not going to happen Connie. Everyone who knows me, now knows that you were sticklers come bucket. They have figured out that I meant nothing to you. I won't subject myself to their pity or ridicule. I intend to live with, and possibly marry Vanessa. Just so you know, we've been having sex non-stop since the day you glued yourself to Stickler. It's the first time I've done anything against my wedding vows. I figure you two have been screwing around for years. Now the kids think that I'm the bad guy. We could have worked this out. You believe what you want to believe Connie. Where we had meant nothing to you. I don't feel guilty at all. I was the one discarded, not you. I'll fight you in court. This is just wrong. Tell Vanessa I hate her. Vanessa could care less what you think. She has the man of her dreams now. I'm kind of liking being appreciated. I might not be rich and powerful, but I have someone who loves me. Have your lawyer work with my lawyer. See you in court. Plus 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 plus. Epilogue. Stickler lost the election. A few days later his wife started divorce proceedings. Connie was named and required to testify. Due to constant harassment, some sexually related, some blaming Connie for Stickler's loss, Connie moved to an apartment. We agreed to sell the house and split the proceeds. All of her Facebook pictures were taken down, and now only close up of Connie and I is there. The police had me in their crosshairs. Until I was testifying in court, I was under strict orders to say nothing. The only real evidence they had was that I was in the men's room, out of sight, the entire time of the assault. I could always testify that since I was getting nothing at home, I was forced into a relationship with my hands, and that's why I was in the men's room so long. Connie was true to her word. She strung out the divorce for a year. I had to survive 12 weeks of counseling. I hated it. Reliving those last two months only made the whole experience more painful. It was also very difficult to watch the woman I'd loved for 25 years have a mental breakdown. Sometimes the hole you dig is too deep to climb out of. I never gave Connie any sign that I would change my mind to reconcile. I was her first husband and she was my first wife. Even after suffering through those counseling sessions, I still don't understand how what we had meant so little to her, until it was too late. Vanessa and I lived together for a year before my divorce was granted. We left for Las Vegas that night and returned as a married couple. Vanessa excelled at my old job. I found employment, as a project manager, for one of the companies my previous employer serviced. No arrests were ever made in the assault of the former senator. An unmarked envelope showed up about two years after the election. It was the erectile dysfunction report for someone named H. Stickler. Poor guy, it appears he hasn't been able to have sex since his attack. The pain in his peen head immediately cancels any arousal he was experiencing. The prognosis was not good. They tried several potential solutions and none had succeeded. The report suggested that he should give it some time and see if things improved on their own. I smile every time I think of that report. Vanessa and I recently celebrated our 10th anniversary. Connie is on husband number 4. We see her at major family events, like weddings, and grandchild births. The only constant is that she always says we could have worked it out Sonny. 
No, we couldn't. And that's it for today's story, my friends. Always remember. Trust, loyalty, respect. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave and I'll see you in the next video.